In this viscast, we want to look at how you can propagate errors in laboratory measurements. In the lab script, you are given three rather simple expressions for propagating errors. The first one, if we have a quantity z which depends upon x and y either in an additive form or a subtractive form and there is an uncertainty associated with the value x plus or minus delta x and uncertainty of that value y plus or minus delta y then there's going to be uncertainty in the value z and how we find that uncertainty is we just add the errors. However if z depends on x with either multiplication or division then we add the relative errors and so a relative error is basically uncertainty in the quantity say delta x divided by the quantity itself x. The third equation we were given is if there is a power relationship between the value z and a measurement of x when there's some uncertainty in x then the relative uncertainty in z is just going to be equal to the power times the relative uncertainty in x. So I want to talk about how all three of these error formulas come about. Let's start with number one, adding errors. And we'll consider the case where z is equal to x plus y. Because there's going to be some uncertainty in z, I'm going to write explicitly that z can take up the value z plus or minus delta z on the left hand side of the equation. And that's going to be equal to x plus or minus the uncertainty in x plus y plus or minus the uncertainty in y. If we look at this expression here, you'll see that there are four possibilities for z. So z could take on the value of x plus delta x plus y plus delta y. We can have x plus delta x plus y minus delta y. We can have x minus delta x plus y plus delta y. And we can have x minus delta x plus y minus delta y. There are four possible ways that these values to consider. Maybe you overestimate the true measurement in the first quantity and you overestimate it in the second quantity. That's like the first line. This is like the maximum value that z can take on. It's x plus y plus delta x plus delta y. Down the bottom here we've got of the four possible values, we've got the minimum value that Z can take on, x plus y minus, and in brackets, delta x plus delta y. So I just factorise out the minus sign here. Look carefully, we can see that if we're adding delta x and minusing delta y, the numerical value for Z is going to be in between these two extremes. So these two extremes represent the extreme values of Z. In fact, we know that Z is going to be determined by x plus uh, y. So in fact this looks like z plus whatever's in the side of the brackets here is my uncertainty in z. So we've got z plus delta z here and we've got z minus delta z here. So this term inside the brackets here is just my uncertainty in z. So I just add the errors. You can go through a similar analysis for when z is equal to x minus y. Let's now have a look at case 2, where z is related to x and y using multiplication. If there's some uncertainty in x and y, there's going to be some uncertainty in z, so I can write down that z is going to have a range of values, about z plus or minus some uncertainty in z. Now that's going to be equal to x plus or minus delta x multiplied by y plus or minus delta y, because this, in brackets this represents the range of values x can have and the range of values y can have. Once again, let's just multiply this out, and we'll have uh, a few terms here. So we've got x times y. I'm going to leave the plus and minus in here. x times delta y. Our third term is going to be delta x times y. So once again, plus or minus delta x now times y. And then we're going to have plus or minus delta x times plus or minus delta y. I'll leave that once again as plus or minus again, delta x delta y. And on this side here, z plus or minus delta z. Now there are quite a few possibilities because of the sign differences here. But it turns out we're not going to have to worry about those too much. Firstly, I want to make a few simplifications before we deal with those. The first simplification is that I've got z here on the left hand side. 
and that's going to cancel with x times y because we've determined that x times y is equal to z. So we can just cancel those two things. Secondly, uncertainty in x is small compared to x and the uncertainty in y is small compared to y. So in fact this is like a small quantity times a small quantity and to simplify things we're just going to set those to zero. So these terms here will be much smaller than these other two terms combined. So now how do we deal with these signs here? We remember that the quantity delta z, the uncertainty in our measured value is always a positive value. So whatever I've got, delta x or delta y or delta z, these things are always positive values. So I can write down what delta z is in terms of x times delta y plus delta x times y. Secondly, to make this a little bit simpler, I'm now going to divide by z on both sides. So putting in divide by z here, I'll divide this by z, but rather than calling it z, I'm going to call it x times y, and divide this by z, but rather than calling that z, I'll call it x times y. Those two things are equivalent. So we're almost at the same form as equation 2 here. I've got x's cancelling top and bottom. Here I've got y's cancelling top and bottom. And we can see that my relative uncertainty in z is equal to my relative uncertainty in x, delta x over x, this term here on the right, plus the relative uncertainty in y, delta y over y. Sometimes to remind us that these things should always be positive, uh, you'll see the absolute signs written around those quantities. That way you always get the maximum uncertainty. Lastly, in equation 3, how does that come about? Let's use the example that uh, rather than z is equal to x times y, we'll just say z is equal to x times x, or x squared. You can see that you can use the error propagation formula uh, 2 for this one here, so that my uncertainty in z, delta z over z, is going to be equal to delta x over x for the first x term, plus delta x over x for the second x term, and that's 2 times delta x over x. So it looks like the power, x squared, the power 2 times the relative uncertainty in x. If I said that z is equal to 1 over x, then my uncertainty in z, delta z over z, is equal to my uncertainty in the value 1 divided by the value 1. Of course that's going to be 0 because 1 is just a constant value so there's no uncertainty to it. Delta uh, x over x. You can see from here importantly if my power is a negative number because 1 over x is x to the minus 1 then really this should have an absolute sign around it as well.